Today concluded day six of Tim Norman of Sweetie Pie's trial. And boy, he had a time today. James Timothy Norman, age 43, decided to take the stand in his own defense. And let me paint the picture for you. He was wearing a black suit, a white shirt, and no tie, by the way. And here's what he said. The first question he was asked was how much money he made from being on the Sweetie Pie show. He replied by saying $10,000 every month. Plus, he became owner of one of the Sweetie Pie's location, and that would make him $50,000 weekly, plus approximately $5,000 weekly for merchandise. Not only that, he had two ATM machines that earned him at least $1,500 weekly. He was then asked if he had anything to do with Andre Montgomery's demise. He replied, no, sir. Tim went on to say that his brother Andre Sr. died when Andre was a baby and that Andre from time to time would visit for the summer to include when he was in high school. Tim's lawyer then asked him, what was your role in Andre's life? His response was that Andre was his brother's son. So he wanted to step in and become a father figure for him. He said he tried his best to show him right from wrong and be a friend at the same time. He continued by saying that Andre was living with his mother, his grandmother, Miss Robbie Montgomery, while he was in high school, that he would try to include Andre in the Sweetie Pie show. Then after he graduated, Andre went back to Texas and he was then asked to return to St. Louis. He stated that Andre had some issues in Texas and he wanted to make sure that everyone heard that Andre was having issues in Texas. Then he said that he moved Andre into an apartment. He added that he paid for Andre's tuition at the music school owned by Nelly, which was $30,000. Then he stated that he moved Andre into an apartment, gave him an allowance, and paid for his groceries and clothing. Tim continued by saying that when Andre got kicked out of his apartment, that's when he decided to cut him off, which was in 2015. 2015 was also the year that Miss Robbie's home was burglarized, where supposedly irreplaceable items were stolen. After this incident, Tim says that Andre disappeared, and that's when Miss Robbie hired a private investigator to find him, with no intention, of course, of hurting him. Which brings us to his involvement with Terika Ellis. Tim admitted that he was in fact in town the night that Andre was eliminated, as opposed to the text message he had between him and an attorney where he stated that he was not. But his reason for being there was to empty the safes from the Sweetie Pies location. And that was it. He added that it was routine for him to send money to Terika because he was paying her for her services since 2009. And he was her client. He stated that he did so due to the discretion of her occupation because, and I quote, we had a family show so I couldn't be out at the strip club popping bottles and that sort of thing. He said that the night they met, he paid her $1,000 for her services and gave her an additional $2,000 for this boutique she wanted to open in Memphis. He also said he didn't pay her the reported $10,000 in a duffel bag, as Terika has testified to. He added that on the day of Andre's killing, he and Terika did have biblical relations at the Chase Park Plaza Hotel. And after they had pillow talk where he casually mentioned that he was looking for Andre, he showed her his picture. And at that moment, Terika recognized him, to which he said, it's a small world. He was then asked about the burner phones he had. He stated that it wasn't unusual for him to have four or five phones on him and that he used those phones for, quote, those conversations that he didn't want to hear on TV because they had to have their phones on speaker at all times, being a cast member of the show. Corroborating his testimony was the executive producer of the show, A Melody Covert, who testified saying that cast members were required to wear wireless mics while they were taping 
and that they had to have the phones on speaker at all times. She continued by saying that some of the cast members would occasionally use prepaid phones for personal conversations. Pertaining to Travell Hill, he stated that he did in fact connect Terica with his homeboy, quote unquote, whom he identifies as Travell Hill, but only in an attempt to find Andre and retrieve the stolen items that he alleges he took. His attorney then asked the question we all want to hear him answer, and that was, did you want to kill or harm Andre Montgomery? He replied by saying, no. Then he asked him, do you still love him? With tears in his eyes, he replied, yes. That's when the defense showed those pictures of Andre posing with guns. And Tim added that he was, quote, concerned about his lifestyle. The prosecution then objected to almost every preceding question because Tim's lawyer began to paint Andre in a poor light, painting a picture of a nefarious character. All the objections posed by the prosecutor were sustained, by the way. Tim went on to say that at someone's suggestion, he got the life insurance policy on Andre. His attorney then asked about the agreement between Wally and himself pertaining to quote unquote doing business. And he replied by saying that he told Wally that he would do the application as a favor. Then he added on October 7th of 2014 that himself, Andre and Wally met to complete the application. Tim also said that he himself did not fill out the application. He alleges that Wally and an associate completed the application and kept him in the dark. He added that he never told Terica or Travell that he wanted Andre dead. And the piece de resistance is that he says he had no clue that Travell was the shooter until July when Travell himself admitted guilt. After lunch, the prosecution opened their questioning by refuting everything that Tim had listed in his criminal history, that he lied. Also, did you all know that Tim owed American Express a total of $215,821? Well, he does. That was mentioned by the prosecution as well. Finally, the prosecution brought back full circle the conversation about the burner phones. And the question that was asked of Tim was, if Terica wasn't a part of a cast. Why did you give her a prepaid phone? Both sides rested and the closing arguments will commence tomorrow. So stay tuned. Let me add one thing, that Miss Robbie was going to be a witness for her son's defense, but the prosecution opposed her testimony as being irrelevant. And when asked by reporters if she would like to comment, she declined. If you haven't already, remember to like the videos as it helps to support our channel. Subscribe and turn on your notification bell and please watch when you're notified. I'd really appreciate it. And lastly, stay tuned for more. I'll catch you in the next one. Take care.